Hello everyone, Steve here, back with another tabletop baseball video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about setting a optimal batting lineup, and I'm going to use as a reference point my sentimental favorite team, the 1971 Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, most of you listening know that the Pirates uh, actually beat the world, uh, the Orioles in the World Series in seven games. Um, Roberto Clemente was the MVP of the series, and um, arguably Steve Blass was the pitching star. Um, this team was also famous uh, because in September of 1971, uh, they were the first team to field an all-person uh, of color starting lineup, um, combined uh, blacks and Latinas. Latinos, and um, so they're famous for that. And um, <clears throat> interestingly, I think uh, the team got no hit by Bob Gibson that year as well. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to talk about uh, some information that's available on Baseball Reference. Seems like every week I learn about more information that's, that's available. I've known about this for a while. Uh, but if you go to the team page of your favorite team and, and year, uh, you'll get a lot of information. Of course, what you're seeing here is at the top of their record and some pictures of the most common common players. But um, in any event, um, what I want to talk about today is starting lineups. And one of the things at the bottom of the team page you can go to is uh, batting orders. And they show you for every game uh, what the starting lineup was. And uh, at the bottom, they show you um, the most uh, common players that batted in each batting order position. And I know this is hard to read, but um, just bear with me. So um, let me talk about the, the typical starting lineup for the Pirates. So you had Dave Cash. He was a singles hitter. Um, he um, he batted 289. Uh, we'll talk about some of his other statistics. But he was the typical leadoff batter for the Pirates. I would say what I'm going to talk about here is their, their typical lineup against right-hand pitchers. They did do a, bl a bit of platooning um, where they would bring in right-hand hitting Gene Kleins to, hit, to play center field. He would often bat second. And then they would switch Al Oliver to first. And then at third base, uh, they would put the veteran Jose Pagan in at third in place of Richie Hebner. But today we're going to talk about the right hand hitting or the lineup against right hand pitchers. And this is very typical, the one I've highlighted here, where you have Cash hitting first, Hebner hitting second. Then you had Roberto Clemente, who had uh, a good average and decent power hitting third. And then you had the traditional power hitter, Willie Stargell, uh, 48 home runs that year. He was the cleanup hitter. And then um, on these days, we had Al Oliver hitting fifth. Bob Robertson, who also had decent power, I think averaged somewhere around 270, uh, hitting sixth. Then you had Manny Sanguian, very free swinger, hardly ever walked, hardly ever struck out. Uh, good average, sometimes uh, hit around 300 or, or more. Um, but didn't have um, <clears throat> much higher of an on-base percentage. So he was off in sixth or seventh. Then um, they had two short right-hand hitting shortstops, Jackie Hernandez, who played in the World Series, and Gene Alley, um, both uh, not really uh, heavy hitters, if you will. So um, you would have one or the other of them in the eighth spot, and then you would have the pitcher, of course, um, in these two days, it was Doc Ellis and, and, uh, and Bob Johnson. Very, I would say, traditional lineup. And it dawned on me the other day, you know, it's like, well, is that what we would today think of as the optimal lineup? And so uh, I, I sought out to ask that question. Uh, if you look at the bottom, uh, it, it's for the whole season, but you can see Dave Cash by far was the the most common leadoff hitter, Clemente and Stargell, by far the most common third and fourth hitter, 
And then, as I said, you had Robertson and San Guillen, um, and then Allie and Hernandez as the as the eighth hitters, as the shortstops. So um, with that as background, what I did is I I actually uh, went to a I did a Google search and I found this this site called Baseball Musings, and it 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 has a, an online free lineup analysis. So what I did is I took the data from Baseball Reference and I typed in the typical starting lineup that I just described. And it takes two different stats, on-base percentage or on-base average, and slugging. And so um, you can see, except for the pitchers, almost all the players had a, around a 300 or more on-base average. Uh, Sargent was the highest with 400, although he had a ton of intentional walks that year. Uh, he just he just killed left-hand pitching that year, uh, in particular. Um, and then slugging. So, um, you know, you had um, I think decent power across the lineup. You can see R Robertson 484 slugging, Hebner 487, and then Stargell with his 48 home runs, uh, 628 slugging. But Oliver was decent, and then Clemente's was around 500 as well. So, uh, you know, a pretty good lineup. So I put all this data in and clicked the, the right radio button and hit submit. And this is what it came up with. So hopefully you can see this, but it, came up with some of the top lineups and in general all these lineups are going to generate 4.8 runs per game which is kind of interesting I think the first most interesting thing was that they have power hitting Stargell in the number two spot now it could be that the math behind this says well you just want your absolutely best hitters at the top of the lineup no matter what uh, because they get the most at-bats. The first couple people typically get five at-bats in, in a typical game. Um, so that was, I thought, very interesting. And then that defaulted Clemente then, uh, for the most part, into the number four position, although um, Bob Robertson, uh, with his power, uh, was also slotted in there a few times. Um, I think the second most amazing thing I saw in here is that in not every case did they have the pitcher batting last. And uh, so I can see four times out of these first 10 or so lineups that they have the pitcher blast batting sixth. And I don't know, but it's possible that what they wanted was for um, guys like Oliver batting eighth consistently, and then guys like Dave Cash batting ninth, They're really acting as leadoff hitters, if you will, to set up um, the, the number one hitter, which was typically San Guillen and Clemente, um, or uh, set up um, Stargell so he can drive more RBIs in. So again, I don't know the statistics behind this. I would love to to see if there are other uh, such tools out there. But I found this quite interesting. Uh, I know a lot of people use as played lineups, and and you know I I think that's that's good, especially for a replay. But if you were in a league situation or what have you. Uh, would you consider using some alternate lineup, including one that um, one that was generated by some of the software? So, as always, I'm interested in comments. Likes and subscribes are fine, but I really want to know what you think about this uh, analysis and um, you know what what you use if you're not doing as played lineups. Thanks for listening. Take care.